everyone. Let's just get started here. Um, good morning, and thank you for coming in to hear me talk. And welcome to How to Market the Morally Broken and Sociologically Depraved. It's a guide to selling your local hacker conference to the public. And yes, I am officially the winner of the longest title here. And winning. It's always a good way to start. This is me. My name is Jamie Payne. I'm the Marketing Director for Midwest InfoSec. Um, that is my email and my Twitter. And just a little bit of background about me. I grew up in a family just like the Brady Bunch. Um, growing up every time. And nope, we didn't have a maid. And no, my dad did not die of AIDS. And now that I've officially set the tone for the rest of the talk, let's begin. My first project was GERCON last year. Absolutely no clue what I was doing. I work in a little cube all day long. Um, and how the whole idea was introduced to me at the end of May and a long weekend, my husband decided that he wanted to start a hacker conference. He'd been to quite a few, not very many in the area, sick of traveling all the time. I was like, sure, that's cool. You seem to know what you're doing. Hey, let's have it in September. Not exactly a lot of time. I had about three months to plan this. So it was a good idea, but where do you start with no money? And I think that's probably the scariest place. You know you've got this great idea. You know that people are going to come. You've been to enough conferences to know what works and what doesn't. But people just aren't inclined to give you any cash when you have absolutely nothing. So you got to think, what am I going to do? Take a page from qualitative risk assessment, like a lot, a lot of people do that come to the conference. And then you just take a wag at it. You know, a wild ass guess. Because seriously, where else can you start with this? And no, not this. This is what Google Images thinks a wild ass guess is. Seriously, don't believe me? Google Image it, it's one of the first ones that pops up. <laughs> and so, hey, it's your first con. You don't have any hard data. But people want numbers. It's always what they're going to ask you when you start begging for money. So, where do you get these numbers from? What's reasonable? I mean, sure, you'd like to say that 10,000 people are going to come. But wow, really? No one's going to believe that. And I doubt you can probably even convince yourself that you're going to get 10,000 people. So you start taking a peek at everybody else. You go to other cons' websites. You know, look up things like how many attendees did they have. Um, look at the ones near you to get an idea of how many people in the area you can expect to come. And look up ones that were in your shoes, one, people that were running first-year cons just like you were. Most of these websites also have archive files, which you can go into and look at previous year's numbers as well, just to kind of get a trending and see what's going on. There's plenty of them to look at. Not a con. Def con, who we'd all like to be like. Black hat. Thought con. Quahog con. Shmoo con. Kiwi con. Gotta love Evil Dead. Hope. And then there's a ton of B-sides. We've got B-sides Texas, B-sides Portland, B-sides Detroit, security B-sides, B-sides London, B-sides somewhere. <laughs> and Fire Talks, one of my favorites. Not sure if it's real. And SpiderCon. That one's not real. I just like the graphic. <laughs> so think about how your dream con would go. How many people are you going to have here? Who's going to be there speaking? What kinds of activities are you going to have? Just everything that would be from the beginning of the day to the end of the day that would just make it the most awesome conference to be at. And then just tell people that's what you're expecting. I mean, seriously, why not? You've already taken all this time to do your research, so it's got to be close. How I tell people we were expecting three to 500 people. And we had no sponsors and no money. Seriously, this isn't the exact one I sent out. I mean, it was, it was about this ludicrous to me when I, the first time I sent it out. And I laughed so hard, I wasn't sure if I could really hit the send button. Because I was like, yeah, this is what I'm really, really hoping for. But I did. I sent this out to over 500 people. I mean, I spammed the shit out of people. Send, 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 send. <laughs> and as I kept sending it out, 
I was reading over it, you get your feedback. I found out what needed to be tweaked, what wording sounded better, what was a little bit more reasonable in case I was a little off the wall on things. You know, the entire editing drill. I'm also tweaking it depending on who you're sending it to. Make sure that they feel special for you sending it to them. So, okay, now you've got this perfect email with just enough of the truth sprinkled in with a little bit of bullshit. Who do you contact? Everyone, duh. You know who the sponsors other cons. You've already done your research. You've taken a peek at everything. Even if you have no idea who they are or what they sell or make. Like I, I made myself a list based on my research. Looking around, I had no idea. Like Cisco. Seriously, what the fuck is a Cisco? And then I looked down. <laughs> duh, they make office phones. This shit was right there on my phone. No, but. Before you make a complete ass out of yourself, it takes like two seconds to look at Google. And then you don't sound too retarded. And then ask every business as you drive by on your way to work. Restaurants, stores, Toys R Us, it really doesn't matter. Just absolutely everybody and anybody. Man bear pig. Everyone's money spends the same. And trust me, you are going to need a shitload of it. Um, hopefully by now, you've already done your graphs and your charts and you know how much the venue is going to cost you, how much food's going to cost, if you can afford food, if you can do beer, anything. You've already got your limit set out and you've already started budgeting how much you're going to do. Wait, it's coming up. <laughs> and don't be afraid that people are going to say no. Seriously, lots will. If I had to make up a percentage, probably about 98%. I mean, it's really fucking depressing. And oh, I keep filling out proposals for Nintendo. And they keep telling me to piss off every time. I'm not going to say that I have, haven't put more than 10 in, but I, you know, I keep trying. I just love Zelda. And it'd be so cool if Nintendo was there. But again, no beans. So, how do you get a hold of the people you are targeting? Almost every site has a general inquiry contact type button, you know, the click on the contact me, and then usually there's a form email, you put your name in, blah, 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 blah. You just fill out all the form crap from your carefully crafted email. And then you just sit back and you wait for all these excited responses, right? I mean, you just offer them the opportunity that they have been waiting for to give you money to make your conference happen. Yeah. Well, I am pretty sure that almost no one ever really reads those. And I could tell by the no responses I got, ever. Except a go fuck yourself email every now and then. You know, it is what it is. <laughs> so, you've hit that point. Now what do I do? It's time for some creative writing, you know. I don't like my bio and a lot of what I talk about. So, let's just start with a pet peeve of mine. It's the term social engineering. Oh my God. It totally does not make you sound smart. It's called lying. Let's be honest, that's what we're doing. It's not new. It's not ninja. Holy shit, get a clue. It's a lot of what like non-technical people like me talk about. <laughs> so, first step, what you need to do, you pick up the phone. Step two, punch in the corresponding numbers to the person you would like to speak with. Step three, and then say hello in an excited but non-threatening voice. They will hang up on you. Don't freak anybody out. Step four, use your mystical powers of persuasion, because that's what you're doing. That's, you're trying to persuade people. And then step five, thank you. Thank them very much for their generous sponsorship money, because you're going to score every time, right? And the reason you want to pick up the phone, because people hit that delete button very easily but hanging up is a lot harder to do. They see in your subject line that you have put sponsorship or whatever you want to put in there, and most people won't even read that. But if you have them on the phone, it's a little bit more awkward and a little bit more uncomfortable for them to hang up. Not that they're not going to, that has happened, but it's a little less likely, and you won't feel as bad about yourself. And this is the scariest part. I mean, it's really, it's personal. Um, it's, it's easy to get tongue-tied and then off yourself over by sounding like a complete moron. 
but you got to get over it. You really do. It's not personal. No one's going to come stab you with a knife or anything. Just get over it. And then don't get too excited when you reach someone's voicemail because that's your first response. You're super excited. You're nervous. You hit the voicemail. You're like, oh, thank God they didn't pick up. I can leave them a message. But they're not going to call you back if they even listen to your message. So you're just going to have to call them back again later. But keep track of the times they don't answer the phone. Plan your next time strategically. Some people honestly take lunch breaks at the same time. You know, you've got to be creative. And always remember, you need to practice your carefully rehearsed sales pitch over and over again to your friends, your dog, your cat, your stuffed animals. It doesn't matter. I like little note cards as I tend to forget minor details like dates of the con and the website, even though it's just gercon.org. Seriously, I've forgotten that a few times and it's a little embarrassing. The second year I've been doing this and I know ahead of time now where I do screw up and you will too because it's going to happen and you got to make sure that you can compensate yourself accordingly so you don't sound like the jackass. And then a really important thing to never forget when you're on the phone giving details is nobody likes to feel stupid except for this guy. So make sure you don't talk over people's heads. And it's really easy to do when you start spouting off a lot of details because they're not going to be the technical people that you're talking with. These are just the people that write checks. So if they don't like you, they're not going to write you a check. You, you've already screwed up. So back to your emails. You're just going to start calling all these people who won't return them because you're just following up. Right? That's what we're going to tell ourselves. They didn't, they didn't reject you yet. You're going to call them. And now you're still going to get a ton of rejection, but you really just need to suck that shit up. And you really shouldn't be getting used to this by now because you've already been rejected probably about 50 times a day. So you need to start thinking, I'm going to change your direction in pursuit of more cash. So what I did is I started accidentally emailing the wrong departments. You know, somebody, I was really hoping that somebody was going to direct me to the people I needed to be. And it really did. A lot of times these people will actually give you a name and sometimes a direct phone number. Seriously. And usually by their email addresses you can figure out if they give you a name what their direct email is. Or at least play with it a few times. You're going to get somebody. And now this means you can call that person and ask for them and practice your new mad talking skills. You've already been practicing. And one of the things that you want to remember to use to your advantage is stereotypes. And there's nothing wrong with them, at least when they're to your advantage. But use them. Like, if you're a woman, men like to think you look like this. Some of them get very excited when they're on the phone, even if this is closer to the truth. <laughs> or this. I don't know if you guys have seen this movie. This thing, this movie cracks me up. It's funny. Funny as hell. So again, are you scared yet? Terrified of the thought of rejection after rejection? Because that's basically what we're going to get. I do freelance and I have business cards. I get told to fuck off at least three times a day, so it's all good. <laughs> so, some of this started working. I was getting some cash flowing in. The next step I thought is how can I really jack these people for cash? Because if they're going to give you a little, why won't they give you more, right? They've obviously got it. Contact the sales department. This is a jackpot. You tell them you want to buy stuff, even if you may or not, might not want to. But now they seriously want to talk to you. They will even buy you lunch. I can't tell you how many times I've been taken out to lunch. Score! <laughs> it is awesome. You've got this great contact now who's hoping that in the end that they're going to buy, you're going to buy their stuff, and so they're just going to kiss your ass just in, and give you money in hopes of the big sale. They figure if they give you a few hundred, maybe the, you, your company will spend like 10000 on theirs. It's awesome. The only thing is, you know, they're going to call you a lot, and they're going to bother you, but like the people you've been contacting, you can just let it go to voicemail. It's okay. And then you want to upsell. This is a very important thing for getting a little bit more money from people. So, okay, you've got these people. They want to sponsor you now. You got them excited. You got them on. Start offering them services like private Wi-Fi, premium booth location, even website ad ordering. You know, whatever you can think of that is going to add value to them, offer it to them. Even bigger ad space on the website 
and then ask if they want to put things in the swag bags. And seriously, it's a pain in the ass to fill them, but hey, it really makes the attendees all excited. I mean, we, we, we like all our free shit, right? It's awesome. It makes your sponsors happy because not only have they been on your website, maybe they paid for ad space in your program, but now everybody at the conference has a little something that they take home with them. And then you can even use your skills to get free help. All you have to do is just throw a couple tickets to a few kids and they will fill the swag bags from front. They will fill the bag bags for you, like our friend here. It works, I didn't fill a single one. And then don't forget the all-powerful offer of exclusivity. You tell people that another company selling what they're selling, because let's face it, no people that you get a lot of different vendors that will be selling the same thing. So you tell one of them that nobody else has signed yet, but you can offer them the opportunity to be the only whatever kind of company that is there. So if not only are they thinking of sponsoring now, but they want to do it faster because they want to beat the other person. They want to be the only person that sells whatever there. And they want to do it fast and they want to do it for more money. Now it seems like you're screwing these people over, but you're not. This is actually a fair trade. Because you are offering them exclusivity, you are really limiting yourself now. Now you can't go out and get that other sponsor. And you really gotta start sitting down and looking over things because you may end up losing money. It's a gamble at this point. And you just gotta feel things feel things out, how they're working, and and make your choice from there. And an important ish important thing that is really easy to forget during this whole process, because you're under pressure, you're nervous, there's a lot of shit going on. I mean, this is all stuff you've never done before, is you need to be excited. I mean, seriously, be really excited. Like, this is the most outstanding, exciting event in the whole wide world. Because when it comes down to it, it really is. This is your event. Your job is to convince these people that they would be missing out if they don't participate. And nobody likes to lose money. And part of your job when you're talking to people is to convince them that they won't by sponsoring you and being a part of your event. And remember to use free market capitalization to your advantage. If you get one specific business to sponsor you, make sure you tell another, like their competitor, that they are. Offer them bigger ads for more money, upsell. And this might work a little better than exclusivity depending on what you're dealing with because you've got both of them. And remember, do not say no to anybody. If someone can't afford your booth space enough for you to make some sign come kind of profit on it, sell them the opportunity to be on the website only. Um, it doesn't cost you anything and it gets their name out there. Um, don't be afraid to make special deals. Cash is cash, no matter how small or who it's from. One of the things people also like is if you customize sponsorship packages. Because the first thing you're doing when you're offering people the opportunity to sponsor is you have um, a pre-built one just to give people an idea of what prices are and what they get for their money. A lot of sponsors are like this because it's me and they feel special. It makes sponsors happy and you get money so you're happy. It's a win-win. Takes, takes a little bit more work, takes a little bit of creativity, but in the end everybody wins in this. And let's face it, begging is hustling. That's what this is. And hustling is hard and lots and lots of work. If you really think that this is something that you can do in your free time, you better think again. Um, I work a 40 hour week, I've got two kids, so we've got a lot of activities going on, and I still manage to put in a few hours every day working on this. And weekends, they're not free of begging either. If people are working, I'm gonna be calling, sending emails, and trying to finish up deals and what I need to do. It's a lot of work. So. Now you've got many kind and generous businesses that have opened their wallets to you. You've got enough money to cover your expenses. Your next problem is how do you get people to buy your tickets? Because if you get no money at your conference, you're never going to get another sponsor again because they don't see any return on their, on their investment. So let's keep it simple. You get the word out. Make flyers. Hand them out to everybody and everyone, like the lovely ones sitting on your seats. 
Shameless marketing. Never hurt anybody. Wear your own t-shirt. Get your friends to wear t-shirts. Talk about your con at other cons. Lots of slides about yourself. And then you email people. Lots and lots of people. Don't have more than 10 friends? That's fine, I probably don't either. Do what you do. Or think about it. Hmm. Think. You're promoting a hacker conference. How could you obtain lists, lists of people? Maybe use your resources, even if you can't do it? I'm not suggesting anything illegal, but there's ways out there. And remember LinkedIn. LinkedIn is seriously the biggest scam on the internet. Use it to your full advantage. Well, maybe not the biggest. <laughs> Shit, another one of these? <laughs> And utilize social networking to its fullest. These are untapped resources that people just don't spend the time on to get a good return. I mean, it's not something like, hey, you know, I tweeted a couple times a day. That's not enough. You really need to use it and be creative. Do what you do. <laughs> Can't really give out a lot of our trade secrets, but <laughs> let's say you have other friends. You could also get your friends to start tweeting about you. Find friends with lots of followers. Well, from other ways, you know, kind of like you're obtaining lists of people. <laughs> may or may not be the best course, but it, it works. Whatever works, but do what you do. Get friends to help you out with this. And seriously, people don't utilize these enough to realize their full potential. Um, do a little bit of research, do some digging. Get someone from Canada to come up to your conference. Woohoo, you're an international affair now. You got people coming from all over the United States, but you got people from other countries coming. That really gets people excited. And you start thinking, how do I get the average person to come? People like shiny objects. A little pricey. No, I'm not talking about iPads. Oh, I do love mine. Billboards. Billboards. These are very these are expensive, but you can usually deal your way down to something good with these with the people that do these. Um, pick one on a highway with high traffic, and you are going to hit a ton of people. Make sure you do your research. That's very important in this. Um, you need to decide if you want a digital billboard or something more like this, which is going to stay just like that, and you get full exposure. You don't have to share the time with anybody. And if someone tells you, hey, we get this much traffic, just get off your ass and drive by. Sometimes they'll tell you, yeah, it's a lot of traffic, but it's way the hell over on the other side of the highway, and nobody fucking sees it. But it gets a lot of traffic. So when we put ours up, we ended up getting calls, and the website getting, started getting a lot more hits the day after we put it up. I'm sorry? <laughs> See, we have our resources. <laughs> and this is another way you get other ideas. Coming to the conferences and getting everybody else's input. This is awesome. You did see my email address, right? <laughs> One of the other things that people are always afraid of hackers. They're afraid of their accounts being taken over and you stealing all their tens of dollars. So exploit people's fears of being hacked. Use it. You contact the local news stations. Play up the fear. That's what I did. Like, oh my God, we have a hacker conference coming to count. Holy shit, what can we do? You know, people react to it. Create your own hype. Pay for radio time. Um, if you negotiate a good deal, you can buy yourself an interview. That's what I did in one of the local stations. Sent the talking points ahead of time that I wanted to get done in the 30 second interview or whatever it was. Um, and while the DJ was going over them before we started to sit down and record, I got the all time most retarded question I've ever gotten in my entire life. Are you like LifeLock? Wow. First thought, are you fucking retarded? But we don't say that, no, no, that is just not nice. You just keep it here. You force your smile. Well, not exactly. 
Because again, you don't want to make them feel like they're the retard. But yeah, you know, it, it was a little difficult to keep on going after that, but it is what it is. You work with it. You learn to just roll with it. And I just always remember when you told you, the teachers always told you that there's no such thing as a stupid question. Yeah, I, I don't know if it's the question that was stupid or the person. I lost, uh, lost a lot of respect for that person after that. And then if fear doesn't work, get a local employment agency to come. You know, arrange to have recruiters and headhunters there. Everybody wants to make more money. Me too. So be the bridge between your attendees and that better job. Tell people to bring their resume. Because you're just doing your part for the community, right? Now you look like the hero instead of the money-grubbing asshole that you probably are. Score. <laughs> and remember things like free beer. Like your kind will have again this year. Free food. Yum. My Gurkhan will have again this year. <laughs> prizes. Everybody loves to win prizes. I love prizes. My Gurkhan will have again this year. Lockpick Village. Shit's awesome. Like Nauticon. And the thing does not. There it is. <laughs> and Gurkhan. <laughs> Remember this whole thing about shameless marketing? There ain't nothing wrong with it. it. It works. Shoot and destroy. Man, that was fun last year. We blew shit up. Like, you're kind of have again this year. <laughs> Contact us for more information. <laughs> That's all on you, man. I, I don't know. <laughs> yep, it's... No. <laughs> and seriously, now everybody wants to come. You're giving them stuff. You're giving your, your sponsors return on their investment. Everybody knows your name. You have plastered your shit everywhere. So, Gurkhan last year, I mean, seriously, surprisingly, out of a ton of guessing and a whole lot of begging and hustling, we sold out our first year. We sold out online. We, um, we were still letting people buy tickets at the door, but it was just crazy. We actually had to say no to some sponsors who were trying to give us money. I know I said never to say no, but after you've already printed off everything, you don't really have a lot to offer. And so seriously, my hustling paid off. Paid off big time. It was a lot of work. Like I said, working and then doing this, phone calls. I had absolutely no free time. And we had awesome people speaking last year. We had attendees lined up like half hour or so before the con even started. I mean, they were waiting for our patented t-shirt distribution system women with hardly any clothes on and they were there to do they were cute and waiting to get good seats and it was it was really awesome we all had a great time I mean so who would want to do it again and I learned a lot my first year I was really stumbling around I know a lot of this stuff seems like oh well that's obvious you know that's you know I should have thought of that well, when you're under pressure and have never done it before, it, it really isn't. You have no idea what you're doing, and it's scary. So I got a better idea of what I'm doing, and at least have some contacts that are real this year. So, you know, don't get me wrong. I'm still whoring myself out for money to new people because bigger is better, and we want this year to be even more awesomer than it was last year. And it totally will be. Got your ticket yet? And I'll stand behind their phone. Start replacing your orders. So, thank you very much for coming. Any, any other questions? Oh boy, it was it was over five hundred. Oh, thank you. I have business cards. <laughs> it, it works out. It works out a lot better to do that because it is scary. Um, the first time someone actually picks up the phone, you're like, I want money, and that's like the only thing you can think of. Just, just write me a damn check. I, I don't know. I, this is awesome. Um, 
it, it was like it was like with the email. The first one you send out, you know, you know, it's, it's your best guess then. But then you start getting more feedback. You're learning what's going to work, what's not going to work. And you think, shit, you know, I should have told them this, you know. That might have helped make my case a little bit better. You just, you work through it. It's, it's always, a work in pro always a work in process, and you're always trying to do better. I'm sorry? Everything, man. They... Beer costs money. The venue costs money. Oh, menu. Ah. That was not on our agenda. We, um, you still got to get to pay for your venue. Ah. Well, well, I guess it depends. Yes, there there are other ways, but um, I guess it depends on what your your goal is, your end goal, what your target is going to be. Because yes, there are conferences like that. That's not what our goal was. We wanted something bigger, free stuff. We are not out to make a buck. But it's free for you, besides your ticket, which covers covers everything else. But yeah, that that was not the is not our intent. I think I have one on it. And it works. It really does. People are scared of things like that that are happening. I mean, we all know better. I mean, well, the problem exists out there, and one of the things you can do is help educate people. Okay. Know, like, like. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We're, fuck Urkan. We're going to call this life lock. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. And thank you guys very much for coming. I appreciate it. Thank you.